Hey everybody, uh, welcome to the podcast. So uh, today we have a very special guest and we also have another person with us who's Oshin and you know, I'll let Oshin do our introduction and then let's go to our guest which is Srini and Akash the Ape. So hey Oshin, tell us tell us what we're going to do here. Hi everyone, um, I think you all know Srini, he recently unlocked himself and we're going to engage like in a very fun conversation with him. We'll probably delve into some nuances of how his journey has been, what all he followed and why ultimately he decided to get retired and unlocked himself and generally what anonymity comes with within the Web3 space and what are the stakes that we're looking into uh, while undoxing ourselves and in general how the NFT space has treated uh, him well within the Indian landscape and yeah I'm really excited to be here and for intros I think um, yeah um, the audience that we'll be catering into might know me through my Twitter since I'm very active there uh, yeah so I'm essentially a technical writer I started out uh, as a tech writer and then kind of did uh, freelance here with, with um, some white papers. And now I'm working um, at Tuma Labs as the developer relations. And soon I'm, I'm going to be joining Huddle 01 as their business and partnerships. Yeah. That is great. You know, that's hell of an intro. And uh, yeah, uh, Sri, uh, I don't know if I saw it right, but do you, are you wearing a Bitcoin t shirt? I am. I am. I am. Nice one. Nice one. That is yeah. so nice because recently I designed my friend's merch. We we designed socks and t-shirts as Bitcoin. I'll be happy to send it over to you. And we did the same. Like, so chucked out a number of t-shirts that just had like Bitcoin is what we believe in written on it. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Yeah, I think you know Oshin was actually pointing out that you recently undoxed yourself. So, you know, Aswini, uh, Oshin did a great job giving an intro, but if you could, you know, just tell the audience, right? Because, I mean, definitely a lot of people already know you in the space, but if you could tell us, uh, you know, why you even dox yourself in the, uh, you know, uh, in, in the first place, undox yourself in the first place and how did that happen and you how, how your journey began? Yeah, if I can, uh, uh, I'm thankful to Oshin for a wonderful introduction, uh, and uh, getting the space rolling. And uh, I mean, before I introduce myself, I would like to put on record that uh, Harshit uh, like uh, contacted me when I was uh, doxxed, so to say. And yes. like I told him that uh, this this is not the time I cannot uh, like uh, get into a conversation with anybody because of the nature of job uh, that I was Correct. doing. Uh, basically, I was working in the Indian Navy and uh, uh, that doesn't allow me to get into any conversation with uh, people outside the Navy, uh, so to say, uh, because of uh, national security issues and all that. But uh, I retired recently. I retired on uh, 1st July this year. And uh, thereafter, that is when I, uh, let's say, undocked myself and uh, became more open to contacts within the crypto and NFT space. Uh, that is uh, why... I basically maintained a low profile, so to mm -hmm. say, uh, in the space. Correct, correct, correct. Got it. And, you know, and Oshin, you know, uh, you just told about anonymity, right? Anonymity in the space. You know, would you be able to relate to uh, what, uh, you know, Srini is talking? Because, you know, that's like a completely different personality. And Akash is not Absolutely. even Srinivas's name. It's the ape's name, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And like thinking about when we talk about Web3, right? And you mm -hmm. talk about building projects, maybe the projects that we're connoted and associated with, we think of anonymity as something that that's something to be proud of. Right. But I, I think it was up until when there wasn't any acceptance of the community in general, when it was still burgeoning out. But I think now building in public, undoxing yourself and in generally growing with the community is something that's sort of a trend. So I think just delving in between and how to strive a balance with what your dog's identity is and at the same time telling people, okay, this is what I'm doing in this space. I'm making contribution in this way is something that I would really like to know about from Jenny. Yeah. Correct, correct. Yeah. Oshin, actually, uh, you brought out a very good uh, valid point that uh, crypto was not accepted and maybe NFTs as a result of that also were not uh, as acceptable in the uh, community. So because of that, many people dox themselves. Uh, but uh, coming to what, uh, I mean, uh, Harshit has told about the uh, board ape, Akash, that is my ape's name. Uh, 
so that uh, profile picture revolution had started with the punks long ago it gave people an uh, opportunity to speak their mind out without really telling people who they were uh, so it it has both uh, pros and cons and um, uh, people can get away with anything without uh, revealing themselves and uh, uh, what has happened in the space is uh, of late people trust uh, only uh, projects with founders are doxed and basically Absolutely. you come to know you come to know that you have to give a face to uh, i mean there are so many scams kind of and all going on kind of authentic agents credibilize yourself correct correct so that that is uh, that is why and uh, now uh, in the indian uh, web3 space there are a lot of communities coming up many people want to build in the space uh, there is a voice which has come and thanks to covid i think um, a lot of people moved online and uh, there is a lot more interaction online social media interaction and uh, people have come to twitter even uh, uh, other than let's say instagram or uh, facebook people have also moved to twitter and that is where uh, a doc a doxed uh, person is more uh, let's say uh, uh, you are more ready to trust a doxed person than an undoxed person so uh, that is the reason basically now since i have decided to move into the web3 space and uh, build web3 communities uh, so to say so i decided to dox myself and give myself uh, this opportunity to let people know who i am certainly certainly got it got it so you know uh, i want to ask you about the the pfp revolution that you were talking about right and you know the first time we spoke already told me that you had a chance to buy a punk but you didn't because you really didn't like the art and you don't want to make the same mistake again so you went on with the with the board ape and can you can you tell us because you know um you and thank you so much for your service uh, at the indian navy right and uh, even your pfp your board ape looks like a military veteran you know right is is there a reason behind it or was it just random yeah actually now that you brought out that punk thing i remember in 2017 when the early uh, crypto kitties is the project that i had got into uh, at that time i had seen how the punks around how did that happen to me how did that happen <laughs> i think i can uh, uh, thank the google search engine for that because uh, when you start Ooh. searching finance when you start searching crypto google oh yeah NFTs. definitely yeah. definitely so, so google google is what uh, showed me nfts and like uh, once i started researching uh, i mean uh, there was this erc20 ethereum because we used to buy ether to get into uh, crypto the icos they would accept either btc or eth Uh, so that is how i got into eth and researching on eth i came to know about erc721 that is the nfts and that is when i started uh, investigating more and uh, then crypto kitties came up it was like a play to earn game i am a gamer so uh, i found it very Thanks. interesting that you can uh, buy cats breed them and sell them for more money so it didn't work out that way but that is the idea that i got into I, it for. i think i think i would relate to this because i am a minecraft streamer and a veteran as well and usme we when we actually kind of breed the farms it's 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 the tokens that we sell in right and everyone knows like minecraft essentially is metaverse and when you build farms and you can sell in animals so in exchange you get skin so totally relatable and it's so fun like for yeah. a person like you know who wants to engage in real time gaming like you're actually building communities and on top top of that it's something that you see uh, as a project to sell and make profit off of Yeah, correct. So, yeah, Oshin totally understood it. I think because she is also a gamer like me. Yeah, so, that's right. So, age uh, age difference doesn't really matter in gamers. So, everybody no. is a agent. especially in the game realm, right? I know people yeah. who have started, um, you know, with pinball, and they are actually like in the same uh, Discord server playing the same games with me. So, age doesn't really matter in that sense. so now now coming to my board ape why uh, yeah. i got into the board ape so like uh, crypto kitties uh, was by dapper labs and uh, through the same dapper labs uh, i found uh, nba top shot uh, i am also a collector like i collect old indian silver coins so like that uh, really uh, picked my interest and i got into it i found out about that and uh, through the nba top shot communities when i came to know about uh, board apes like the founder had tweeted about some project and his picture was that of that monkey so when i got into it then i realized that uh, these are board apes and i kept seeing them like i saw them initially at about 0.3 eth and slowly they kept rising i didn't really think i would get myself a board ape 
uh, but the house of kiba discord in which i was there they were like uh, saying we'll give 3d files free to all board ape holders so i thought maybe why not let's pick up one board ape uh, point 2.3 point then i went and looked at the market it was already at point 6 point 7 i thought maybe it will fall i'll pick it up when it falls but uh, i think from point 3 to 1 eth it went in about 2 or 3 weeks so that is when i realized that uh, i might miss out on this i was looking for a sailor ape because i'm from the navy i was looking for a sailor ape but uh, couldn't find it so uh, like uh, harshit was saying i then looked around what is affordable for one eth all i could find was this uh, uh, army jacket with a uh, some kind of cap so that is how i picked up this board ape and his name is akash uh, so that is his intro bayc 4 4924 Got it. Got it. So what? What? Wait. Ah. Uh, so you bought two apes, right? You bought two apes, and you sold yeah, them. Yeah. 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 Actually, Harshit is uh, giving out all the alpha in this uh, podcast of his. <laughs> a few few weeks later, I saw another. I mean, I managed to sell some other cryptocurrency and picked up my second board ape at two point five ETH. Uh, that was about uh, a week or two later. And uh, a few weeks down the line, somewhere I think in I picked up my first board ape on first June. Second guy I picked up I think in middle of June. And I think by end June, early July, I saw the board apes were at three point five ETH floor price. Okay. So okay. I I accepted a, a with I mean a, a basically an offer of three point five ETH on my ape wow. second ape. Yeah. So I thought like the in normal uh, terms you think अच्छा ठीक है one ETH I've got back. So let me my first board ape becomes free. That is how I looked at it and uh, sold my second ape at three point five. So. Uh, but uh, that is one of the regrets of my nft absolutely space. a friend of mine actually had 10 board apes he's a full time crypto trader i know i know yeah <laughs> like and he flipped it like just like that <laughs> and it's his uh, he's been regretting it since last year and now that the market is down he kind of regrets that he should have bought and invested in more uh, utilitarian nfts in general and not just some random old coins or tokens so get again research a lot um so what has your experience been as a board ape and you know the access of the communities that you've gotten into and what do you find the utilit- utilitarian nature of things you know as a bayc holder hmm. yeah so uh, as a bayc holder you asked me two questions how do you find the community and what is the utility right so yeah. Yeah. Uh, initially uh, when i got into the board apes like uh, there uh, you have most of us i mean like three of us i think will be in the same boat though we are at different age groups uh, that uh, you we are a uh, little out of the box thinkers so when i got into the board ape community i found a lot of these people were out of the box thinkers like they would uh, crack uh, uh, what's a jokes and uh, pull each other's legs on twitter so that is a kind of community i felt uh, the early community i'm talking about was uh, what i really enjoyed uh, uh, following and maybe uh, finding out and the lot of people started using this uh, this ip that the board ape gives them so there were like comics coming out punks comic was there board ape comic was there there are many things which uh, like again i am a collector i am a gamer and i love comics so it it kind of matched my uh, interests so i got into this comic i found some community members who were making comics and all that so i got into those communities and tried to put my ape into a comic so that is how i found the initial utility of the board apes that you can use this ip in a very constructive way uh, there were royalties promised obviously i have not got into any royalty deals till now but there are people who have got into royalty deals and that utility of the board ape early utility had started off even when the apes were at about 2 uh, uh, or 3 uh, eth even then the utility had come in so right. uh and community like it has been growing there have been rifts in the community i can say that uh, now uh, there are different once the big money started coming in the community changed but uh, it board ape community set the tone for many future nft communities that came out which That's i true. mean you can see all around you uh, the definitely when the, even yes, the, the even the tooling and the infrastructure that projects look on to i think bayc uh, as you know as a movement is a very good model to follow in general yeah correct so uh, that is why the community and the utility and uh, as of now the utility keeps growing because 
now it, it is a limited edition there are only about let's say 9998 apes and about uh, 20000 odd mutants so these 30000 is uh, a gated community kind of thing they are going to come up with more and more stuff maybe I, in real life also they at one time they had a plan of a nightclub in miami where only board apes can enter for free so those kind of utilities are there and and uh, the second thing about board apes is it started off some kind of culture so like yeah. you have a lot of these rappers you have a lot of sportsmen in the west who have got into board apes seeing them a lot of film stars and celebrities also got in so that is how it worked out and uh, the that is how the board ape uh, culture started off and which has percolated to other nft communities also got it got it got it so you know i, I was i was having this question all along right so we missed on board apes right i personally i did i was in the clubhouses and you bought it but never took it so what now what about the people who are entering the space now are there only going to be yuga labs and you know other gutter cats which you own are those the only blue chips or do you think you know what's your take on nfts in general you know all the nft projects that are coming up right now uh actually my take on nfts is like uh, if you got in early obviously uh, you are at a advantage but right. um, there are so many nft projects uh, that are coming in i am talking specifically from the pfp side but uh, that apart you have a lot of artists i follow a lot of artists and all that in this space so nfts as a platform it gives a lot of visibility to creators content creators artists photographers musicians all these people get a lot of uh, visibility here because in the real world there are a lot of uh, what do you say roadblocks for a normal person to get into uh, to show their art or show their content outside yeah. yes uh, tick tiktok instagram allows some people to come up but artists per se like uh, what do you say painters musicians these people have not been able to really make it and nfts has given them an option to come out now coming to what you said uh, if you didn't get in early into some of the og communities so to say Uh, there are projects which are coming up uh, frankly speaking i uh, i don't want to shill in your podcast but there are projects in india also i have seen which are really uh, doing uh, wonderful things uh, there are uh, like uh, i mean you know how how popular ipl is uh, so similarly there's a boxing league which i only found out after coming to nfts and they are like doing their own nft project so uh, it is not necessary that everything that Maybe starts even cricket players are doing their own nfts even right. though um, you know it's it's not allowed by the bcci but i think there there uh, you know people in general who are in the creative spaces who are not into traditional careers want to take uh, and utilize nft spaces as something that they can build their personal brand on yeah well. but uh, what i have seen in uh, india uh unfortunately is that uh, many of the celebrities who get in get in for the money, money not for yeah, the community or the culture absolutely yeah, yeah so that that is a problem because uh, yeah, the celebrity i mean uh, early yuga labs uh, uh, board ape uh, communities had these sportsmen and all coming in and they were called out for the cash grabs unfortunately in india uh, the community is not so mature to call out the cash grabs by the celebrities so uh, a lot of uh, people who get into the nft space early and like i went into amitabh bachan's nft but somehow it's not selling now so uh, that is there it is uh, uh, we still are a young space in india and uh, we will grow better true do that got it got it so i think you know oshin you were just talking about you know bcci not allowing indian cricketers right so that's an entire different story itself so what's your take on the regulations right i mean yeah definitely i'm just you know uh, you know moving to a different question altogether but i just wanted your perspective right because we are in the indian ecosystem i mean a lot of a lot of web3 folks right a diaspora of indian web3 folks are moving to dubai singapore you know, uh, crypto natives are right so wh- why are you still in india srini you know blood question why are you still here and because the last time we spoke you said i'm uh, moving to hyderabad and i want to build a proper community in india right why um actually my reason is more emotional but i'll tell you a practical reason after that my reason is more emotional because i have worn the white uniform for 23 years serving this country 
so for me oh, nice. <laughs> going out uh, yes, yeah nice. correct going out becomes a little emotional thing I, maybe a few years down the line once the uh, what do you say the uh, the uh, the army or the navy thing wears off maybe i might think of going out but as of now that is why i want to build uh, because i feel that our country needs to progress that is the emotional reason coming to the practical aspect of it a lot of us um, uh, have a lot of attachments in our uh, uh, maybe in this uh, country uh, leaving all that going out uh, breaking connections because it's not easy if you have uh, parents family or siblings uh friends relatives it it becomes a little difficult to just leave for crypto maybe if you find something more than that outside you might go uh but uh, yes like you brought out the regulations are making it very difficult for true believers who want to work for the country to stay in the country and work unfortunately that happened during the it boom also a lot of our uh, i mean you've heard of the term brain drain a lot of uh, indian brains moved to silicon valley and helped uh, nasa silicon valley so many uh, things in the us because of uh, regulatory issues over here and uh, the government unfortunately cannot view it in a better scenario because uh, because of the scams etc in the space i mean if you can uh, just look back a few weeks you will see celsius uh, uh, there were big companies like celsius three arrows uh, consulting them so many of these companies just uh, went bankrupt because of uh, crypto uh, so the, from the government's point of view they are maybe protecting uh, indian citizens by making the regulations so difficult that uh, nobody gets into these things uh, but the uh, sad part is that uh, when you put such huge regulations it also stifles innovation it also stifles growth that is uh, true have... and i think that, that's a side we're ignoring as well because right now everyone's super mad about the regulation side of things and how government is trying to gate gatekeep um the technology and they're not able to understand and gauge the possibilities that we as an ecosystem can build upon but there's also a side to it where it's it's actually stimulating a lot of people to think more innovatively and and come up with projects um that kind of sets in tone and align with the ecosystem that we're in right I mean, with the government firstly i know some folks who are working closely uh, with the government to find and you know strive a way through that that kind of fetches a middle ground between what they want and we as a counter movement want as well i think that is required in the space that the people engage with the uh, the policy makers the decision Absolutely. makers in, instead of just going all bonkers on them right correct correct because it doesn't work uh, if you go and i mean you can't go to war with the government you have to yes. uh, find a middle path you have to find what their uh, what do you say uh, uh, what their are their uh, are maybe correct, maybe what, so. what they have in mind right correct so um you have the ip right you have the ip of the board ape so how 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 do you want to take it forward with this that because you already are doing a lot on, on twitter supporting a lot of artists and a lot of people i think you recently had a comic as well right someone created a comic or uh, can you tell us about the comic as well and and then move to you know how you want to take it uh, you know how you want how you see your board ape um, right okay so uh, coming first to the comic and thereafter we'll move to the board ape the comic yeah, actually yeah. is there is a company called myth division in usa that has been uh, like the founder he was working in hollywood hollywood initially uh, mm -hmm. but subsequently he has uh, moved out and started his own thing about 10 years ago mm -hmm. so he he used to make uh, comics uh, with uh, characters basically technology related kind of thing uh, metaverse kind of thing uh maybe at that time it was not called metaverse but when nfts came out he realized that this is the thing that he was waiting for and mm -hmm. he offered early in the space he offered a lot of board apes uh, a cameo role in his comic okay and uh, basically for which i had uh, volunteered and uh, my board ape had uh, uh, got selected and mm -hmm. in the first uh, comic it was there like there is a series of comics it is like series uh, the first edition it is there okay uh, as as one of the members of a ape mafia so to say uh, so that is that is my apes uh, and as of now there is no royalty deal per se it is just a community thing that i have allowed my apes usage wow. with the promise that i don't sell him down the line so that has kept me from selling the board ape uh, more than anything else is that i made a promise to somebody that i won't sell it 
so that is uh, the reason and the comic is uh, basically it's coming out with more uh, editions okay and uh, they have a whole ecosystem of pfps and uh, metaverse a sandbox uh, kind of thing in which uh, uh, basically it is all related and that is where my ape is getting used in the future if they come out with a ip royalty kind of deal which i will definitely take on for my ape got it got it, got it. Yeah, so uh, the other thing that you were asking me was about how i plan to use my apes ip uh, the thing is that uh, code apes there are a lot of uh, requirements for ip usage in uh, usa and maybe australia those kind of places because the culture has already set in in india per se as of now i don't think culture for nfts has come in where i can put my nft on maybe a, a packet of coffee or a soft drink bottle or something like that so uh, i'll wait for that to come in here i am exploring outside if abroad anybody wants to use that uh, ip i am open to that uh, for use of the ip on uh, basically any kind of merchandising any kind of products it can be used uh, as of now i am uh, uh, thinking Shani, what has your been what has your strategy been in approaching these people how do you kind of brand yourself uh, you know and just gauge which are the right communities that you can leverage off of for using this yeah so the thing is with the board aid i really don't have to find people people come to me that is the advantage of yeah. the board aid yard club so, so so another utility that that is the beauty of that project but there are other nfts that i have i have approached people for uh, that uh, basically what you have to do is in the community you find somebody who's like a maybe movie producer or you find somebody who's like in their bio you look at it and they have something related to an irl business so you approach them you tell them that this is the nft i've got if you're looking for some ip usage i am open to that and that is how you just leave it at that sometimes you get a call back or maybe something or sometimes you don't and uh, the other thing is in discord communities also there is always chatter about this you just keep your eyes and ears open maybe you will find something that is how i do it got it so how active are you on discords uh not really i find the discord is not for my generation i think it it is an age issue uh, i don't see too many people of my age on discord i think uh, you need a shorter attention span for discord which uh, i think uh, uh the younger people have that so i find uh, twitter is the most convenient for me uh okay. discord telegram uh, there are communities over there but i don't uh, i'm i'm not uh, as what do you say comfortable using that so i have to participate because of having some og nfts i have to be there so that yeah 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 you know i was just thinking of you know nfts in general again right because um i see personally i see nfts as a token which gives you access to that particular community right let's say let's say someone wants to buy a board ape at a floor price right now um they basically you know they're basically buying the token to get access to that community to get access to the people in the community right uh, am i right in this analogy or what do you think do you, do you have something there, different in your mind yeah there are two things one is somebody who's looking for community obviously a board ape is an excellent entry excellent. point into community. yeah excellent entry point into community the other thing is culture like if I, if you're a celebrity then you will go for a board ape because of the culture you want to be seen as one of the people who holds a board ape that uh, exclusivity kind of thing but uh, majority of the web3 uh, degens like us we would uh, uh, people like us would get into a board ape only for the community because it opens so many doors it gives you a lot of access to uh, uh, what do you say uh, the early nft communities and uh, people with more resources more funding got it got it so you know basically that that cloud right once you have that cloud it's like a blue tick mark it's like a blue check yeah. on your twitter on your instagram and once once you have yeah. that people do flock to you right um so what about communities now right uh, communities in general because there are a lot of uh, nft projects that just um, use the word community as a marketing tactic just to get people on board so what is the core of a community because you know i've been hearing the word community itself so many times in this space right now but what's the core of it what's the fundamental of a community okay i'll uh, uh, put it in maybe two or three things one is uh, like uh, i've seen communities are basically for supporting each other uh, that is how it works 
uh, because everybody is with the same profile picture kind of project so everybody feels that they are part of a family uh, it there are uh, uh, what do you say issues related to uh, mental health issues related to uh, what do you say uh, people's inability to maybe connect with people in real life you suddenly find a community which is supportive uh, which gives you what you uh, what value i mean like worth which you feel self worth value that is given i've seen a lot of communities support people who are in the communities to find uh, yeah. self worth I, i think the interests and uh, personalities correlate as well because all of them kind of um, are in those communities for a purpose and with a purpose and it's generally a wholesome space to be in and you you just uh, can a lot of collaborations i've seen happening and recently a couple of my friends within the dao that i am a part of and contributed to a lot of them launched their own projects so you see these semi and micro projects being built from within communities and i think it's it's correct. like the best thing in the ecosystem so. correct so it is basically support and utility that you get i mean you get a lot of yeah. uh, and you get like access to the right set of people yes there are a lot of uh, creators a lot of uh, developers etc in the communities and yeah. you get the uh, easy access to these people if you are part of that absolutely. community absolutely and and it's like so one of the developer communities that i am a part of and the nft that i hold to um the reason that i wanted to be a part of it because i was working on my own project right and um initially when we uh, want a developer organization on board with us they would charge us a certain amount but if you get access to them through these communities they would charge you nothing we would, they they would just be there with the spirit of the project and they would just would want to collaborate on it so there's a there's a pretty high difference in uh, margin wow. you need to look in when you invest in these communities correct correct that that said uh, there are a few pitfalls of communities also like uh, if you want to leave a leave a community suddenly everybody in the community will go against you they'll troll you on twitter yeah. so 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 it, it is, <laughs> there are there are uh, pitfalls also sure you, know, you know all of this conversation right it, it just brings me back to the first conversation i had with oshin and srini just wanted to let you know that oshin actually we, we found each other on discord right so she randomly pinged me mm. out of you know from community so you know the point that yeah. i'm trying to make I here mean... is you know we're all primal beings right and you know social animals so um, oshin actually she comes from a psychology background would you be able to tell us you know is community just web3 or has it always been there and you know what do you think of it just you know share your points it's it's a really interesting question especially like to talk about it right now and i've always um I always wanted to answer it and that's what i tell people as well so yet again it's always been there uh it, it's in our primal nature to engage ourselves in congregational settings to f- the feeling of you know being that i belong here in this space and it's just you can say it's accentuated by this paradigm shift that's decentralization because like one of my friends quoted right praji who's also building a bnft project you would know ashit and chini as well and you know we were just chatting and i i told her that you know essentially we all are a bunch of mis- mis- misfits who didn't kind of align wow. with with the traditional jobs and you know going to college going to perfect, um, perfect. working in a vertical directly and that's why you're here right and that's yeah. why um yeah. if it's not easy to find your tribe in this space because essentially we all are here with a purpose and a reason right with sunny as well right when when you i mean what are the odds of a navy officer uh, being interested in buying a boat right <laughs> yeah you put it perfectly oshin it is uh, uh, like harshit and i also spoke about this uh, it is all these uh, uh out of the box thinkers i mean like people who are a little different who don't want to uh, tread the trodden path so to say yeah. uh, who, who it it probably them. would become yeah it probably would become a um, mainstream trend eventually because that's how consumer psychological concepts operate but just to be in this space early is kind of says a lot um uh, you know as a statement out to the world that okay i've identified this thing and like you said right google we researched about it sni yeah that it was handed over to us we we made the conscious choice to be a part of this community to work here to collaborate with people here right yeah and i think that that that's the distinction here
perfect perfect so um you have any other points to share about it uh Srini, because you know you've been in the space and you, you are a part of the elite community in the web3 space right so do you relate to any of you know what oshin said because it just blows my mind because that one one statement itself right we are a bunch of mit- misfits you know who wanted to come together and <laughs> we're making shit happen it's just perfect yeah yeah it, it's a perfect statement i think this you should tweet about this statement by and give credit to Oshin, a bunch of misfits coming together. That That is exactly, I think, the best phrase to describe Web3 NFT communities. Uh, because uh, like I, I've, I've been in the Twitter, following the Twitter uh, crypto spaces early uh, and uh, subsequently came to NFT. So you find a lot of uh, maximalists or maxis, so to say, in the crypto space. Whereas in the NFTs, uh, they are more of uh, the wag me culture. That is the we all are going to. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's, so it's that, more chilled out. People are more. Yes, yes. So what, what, what I found a distinction in hardcore, um, you know, people who are investors or traders who are mm-hmm. deeply associated with the tech side of and the financial side of things, mm-hmm. uh, where in general the NFT community is, you know, relatively more wholesome. People are nicer to each other, and people understand that uh, the belying purpose of let's just say a project or a DAO isn't to make profit or money, but mm-hmm. it's also you know, to create a social impact. And I think that's the difference there. Correct. Well, well, it's perfect. What you said is the correct thing. That is why I uh, gravitated towards the Web3 communities because I also feel uh, uh, more on that, like uh, like you said, social causes, those kind of things. That is only possible through Web3 communities, not through a traditional yeah. financial makeup. Community. Correct, yeah. correct. Sure. And, you know, uh, decentralization, right? Because, I mean... We, we already know what decentralization is, but then I get this question, right, a, a lot of times. Is decentralization, does it really exist or there are always going to be centralization because as human beings, we always, you know, uh, look up to something, right? That's why we believe in religion. That's why we, you know, we have someone on the pedestal and we, wall, we want to follow something and that's wired in us. And we always have, have a tribe leader, stuff like that. So will decentralization, like proper decentralization ever be possible? Actually, uh, from like, uh, I don't want to take the psychological perspective out, uh, Okay. but okay. Uh, if Oshin will permit, uh, I will say this, that, uh, uh, I mean, I'm, I read a lot of books, so I come across this that said that uh, we have two kind of mindsets. One is our tribal mindset because of our primitive brain, and okay. the second one is the uh, social mindset because of our uh, ability to connect with people uh, and go let's say beyond ourselves, like you don't think about self-preservation. I think we are the only animal that can leave self-preservation I, I was, aside. I was going to uh, take that point as well. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why so, I said that if Oshin will permit me because that, that is... <laughs> well, certainly. So what, what kind of, uh, you know, um, distinguishes us from other breeds of animals, not to say that there's a hierarchy that exists in nature. Um, it's actually conscious awareness. Is It's the concoction between um, the social and the primal world because we have the leverage to communicate and speak with one another and exchange ideas, right? And it's not just biological mechanisms that guide us. It's also the social causes, the self-actualization uh, motives that we, we kind of inherit, uh, whether it's epigenetics or in general through social communities we've grown up in yeah uh, and now coming to decentralization why decentralization is important is this was realized by all these uh, uh, what do you say misfits in the society in 2008 mm-hmm. when the when the i think i uh, think but but the concept of cryptography has been on and around since the 70s right so that kind of says a lot that people had been thinking yeah. about chugging away and you know recognizes the recognizing the paradigm shift of centralized banks and conglomerates operating and um poaching off of their finances and their social resources so i think yeah it's, it's a, web3 or not uh labels or not it's a good shift in the in a, in the right direction right yeah, and uh, like uh, I was bringing out that 2008 subprime crisis is what really pushed uh, uh, Satoshi Nakamoto or whoever it is to come out with this kind of decentralized thing so that this this single point of failure is taken out from the financial systems because a lot of people in the world depend on financial systems for their, uh, what do you say, livelihood. So uh, centralized systems have a single point of failure. Like if one bank fails, everybody goes down. Everybody fails. Yeah. Correct. So, uh, but 
blockchain is totally different there is no single point of failure there is a proof of work there is a proof of stake both have their own different consensus mechanisms but there is no single point of failure and there is always an ability to recover by forking the blockchain or so to say so uh, that is why decentralization exactly exactly and you know you you guys pointing out about this centralized centralization and the banks and of course the 2008 uh, your mortgage crisis right so the single point of failure right you know it's it's always been like that i mean the 1% always have the power with them and they can change the rules they bend the rules they write the rules you know there was this interesting book that i read which was called the grunge of giants by buck mr fuller so he was you know talking about the same idea and you know the grunge actually means the gross universal cash heist of giants right and if, if we go back to that it's, it basically means the giants have the power the 1% you know everything centralization and whether you are not again the, the you know the tags or not this is a major shift um, you know it actually i can even go as far and say um, this is a great push for humanity in general right because imagine yeah, people I mean... in iran yeah go ahead go ahead to to add to that to add to that mm-hmm. ashit right mm-hmm. um, it, it's it's actually um, a more organized effort in that sense because um, you know if you think about human civilization in general we mm-hmm. we shifted um, from you know operating completely decent in a decentralized fashion in an unstructured way to a, a structured way when the currency came in right so the concept right. of money essentially is what you make something centralized so it's easy it's fungible it's exchangeable mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. but then um, you know it kind of went into a direction that was extreme and now uh, there's a shift uh, towards a paradigm in which we have more control over our data over our financial resources and in communities in general yeah correct 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 and you know how how do you think like nfts play a role at this right again because i'm asking this question because srini is deep into nft so uh how long would it even take for to, to for it to become mainstream and actually uh, i can i add to that question mm-hmm, so srini mm-hmm. what's your take on nfts that are not art do you think they'll have as much utility as yeah. as what you know art nfts have drawn themselves mm-hmm. into okay so uh, from art i'm uh, taking that even uh, movies and music videos are yes. part of that music so, yeah anything yeah yeah so all that is uh, basically that is art uh, the uh, when i was in the early nft communities uh, i used to mm-hmm. listen to twitter spaces because i never used to really engage with them but i used to keep my ears open and what mm-hmm. i found was Uh, during the covid uh, there was a lot of talk uh, in some of these communities about funding covid research using nfts like uh, harshit brought out the centralization the 1% controls so the huge pharma companies have the funds to uh, fund the research and uh, maybe it could be tweaked in a way to profit them whereas mm-hmm. if nfts come into that uh, like instead of uh, maybe researchers uh, depending on the government or depending on huge centralized organizations they can come to the community they can set up an nft and take funding from the community uh, that kind of research will obviously uh, be more uh, let's say neutral and uh, not biased towards any organization so that is one utility of nfts the other utility of nfts is like uh, gating i think you already have it like uh, when we go for movies you get your uh, Uh, book my show uh, what do you say the qr code yeah. so like uh, for entry like into colleges into maybe uh, hotels you could have a gated uh, nft could be used for uh, various things because you can prove its ownership on the blockchain you can prove its uh, what do you say uh, holding so that that is another utility of nft these two things i feel uh, in the future we'll see much more of uh, like uh, for uh, Uh, the ticketing and uh, the research funding that kind of thing. true 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 got it yeah because you know even when the entire ukraine and russia thing happened i mean i don't want to get political here but just saying that sandeep and you know they raised around 1 billion dollars um just with the wallet address right and would it even be possible in the web to world because you know i have this person example when i tried you know um, when i had to uh, uh, you know uh, fund my college tuition fee which is outside of india i i did that through a centralized bank 
and it was flagged as uh, money laundering, right? So things like these, there are so many problems that Web3 is solving. And uh, you talking about utilities here makes a lot of sense, right? Because NFTs can be used as uh, you can gate people and you know, all you need is wallet address. You scan it, you know, the person is, you know, is, is supposed to enter or not, or, you know, multiple things that can come, come on. So um, I just, uh, you know, had this person question. So what do you think about uh, young folks in the Web3 space, the 20 year olds building in the Web3 space? And do you have an advice for them? Right. Just asking for myself and, you know, people in the early 20s. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, my advice to the youngsters would be that you engage in the community. I don't see them uh, like engaging enough. Like uh, you have to put in effort. Uh, people don't uh, think that, uh, what do you say, it will come to you easily. It, it takes a lot of effort. Uh, you have to engage with the communities and you have to find the right people. There are enough and more people who will try to uh, what do you say, cheat and all that. But there are communities where you can find good folks. And once you find those good folks, like uh, I'm telling you, I found Harshit and Oshin. I'm like, now I know I'm going to connect with them in the future. It, you find enough good people. You just have to follow them and uh, coordinate with them and engage with True. them. Yeah. Exactly. And, you know, I'm just being really honest. It, this this podcast is just a, you know excuse to have a one hour long conversation with you guys. Right and consume as much information and share share thoughts. So um, yeah, I think you know just coming to the end of the podcast. So uh, are there any questions that you'd like to ask Oshin? Right, um, this because this has been an amazing conversation, and I would go back again, listen to this. Right, there's so much stuff here. Certainly. Yeah, yeah Oshin. Yeah, I I think I share the same feeling. Uh, I mean, I I I'll actually got to know a lot of things and I wanted to wear Srini out, know his story and, and I made a few pointers as well that he said about, you know, um kind of engagement because um mm -hmm. once you once you I mean within the Web3 space I've seen people get comfortable once they've made money, right? They don't engage with communities as often. They don't talk about it. They just stop you know getting on AMAs and they're mm -hmm. just very happy with it. But I think okay. it's a constant um procedure of learning and unlearning and then relearning as well because this space is moving wow. so fast and it's yeah. it's very yeah. nice to have a strong network within you especially people you can count on and rely on even even though like they live off the far live off far places and i think this is this is the beauty of things right uh we're also hyper connected through twitter through discord you know through through DAOs that we contribute in and it's it's generally um being a global citizen in a decentralized utopia in its sense so i think that's the appeal i'll take on from this podcast perfect perfect and you know, I think you just pointed out, right? What was it again? Would you would you repeat that? It's um unlearning, learning, and relearning. Is that so? Yeah. Perfect, yes. perfect. I think that that really explains what uh, what Web three is because it's constant learning, and you know things don't stay the same. So you got to keep yeah. learning, talk to a lot of people, and I think Oshin's doing an amazing job, right? Uh, all out, you know, her entire feed is filled with connecting with you know different folks, and uh, which is great. Yeah. So. I think uh, Srini, it was it was amazing, right? This podcast was amazing. And it are you in Hyderabad amazing. right now? No, no, I'm sorry. I'm not in Hyderabad. But when I visit Hyderabad, I'll definitely hit you guys up. And uh, if I come to Bangalore, then I'm meeting you to Oshin. Pakka, definitely. I'll be in Delhi next week. So we can just uh, yeah. talk over if you are here. For sure, for sure. Yeah, thank you so much, guys, right. for being a part of this.